Testing, testing, testing. Still have not fixed the mic stand. <laughs> testing, testing, uh, testing. Uh, <laughs> Somebody made a meme on Twitter, which I know you didn't see, but it was the Black Panther. Uh, and he was like, somebody get this man a mic stand. Because <laughs> that was a line in, do you remember the line? Somebody no. get this man a shield? I think, I think he was talking to Cap. And he was saying, somebody get this man a shield. Riveting. So that was the joke. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions, you idiot. So, Corbin. I'm Captain America. Or someone to get this man some pants or something. From, from Black Panther? Or, it was Black Panther saying it. I don't know if it was in Black Panther specifically. Oh. But it, it was Black Panther um, saying it. Chadwick Boseman. For those who didn't know. Uh, yeah, I didn't know. Oh, really? Yeah, it sounds, so, sounds amazing. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Anyways, today we got a little kind of a interview conversation between S.S. Rajamuli oh. and the Russo brothers. Hey, who that's cool. obviously directed many um, Marvel films, yep. including Endgame and all those, and obviously The Gray Man that just came out with Danush. And then S.S. Rajamuli directed uh, one of the best action films ever. Ever in the history uh, of the world. And the best buddy comedy of all time. That's, in my opinion, <laughs> best best buddy film of all time. Anyways, but no, yeah, no, so I mean, you could argue there's some other ones like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, uh, Lethal Weapon, The I, Odd Couple. I don't remember seeing a uh, Bonnie and Clyde, uh, Natu Natu, in any exact, of those. Exactly, <laughs> Ig, exactly. <laughs> that alone, and that opening scene when they save the kid in the train bridge, flying hands, uh, Indian flag. It's glorious. So it'll be interesting to see this conversation between, obviously, the Russo yeah, brothers, who cool. obviously are very iconic with, with Hollywood films in terms of Marvel and what they were able to do. Obviously, one of the seen biggest... seen this guy a lot. Yeah, Ra yeah. Raji, I think his name is Rajiv. Yeah. Rajiv. Um, I don't even know if he does reviews anymore. I don't even see his uh, reviews coming out. I don't know. But anyways, here we go. But, you know, I think um, this is a, a historical moment of sorts. You know, on the one hand, right here, seated here, are two, arguably two of the most successful, the, the, the most successful filmmaker duo in Hollywood, um, Anthony and Joe Russo, the men that gave us uh, two of the highest grossing films of all time, Avengers Endgame and, of course, Avengers Infinity War. And then, joining us virtually from his home in Hyderabad um, is arguably the most successful filmmaker across India, Mr. S.S. Rajamoli, whose last two films, RRR and um, Bahubali 2, shattered box office records for Indian films worldwide. So um, forgive me for being very excited today. Uh, we're very excited as well, by the way. Raja, such a pleasure to meet you. We're huge fans. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Joe. Thank you, Anthony. So, so nice to meet you. Lovely. Gentlemen, I thought I'd start by asking you... Lovely. Let's move on. ...trick to telling stories that transcend boundaries. Um, mm. I feel like Hollywood has done that successfully over the years. Um, your films travel... Universal truth. ...just English-speaking boundaries. Um, what is the trick to telling a story to a global audience? And is that something that weighs in when you're writing? I think it, do, it, it does weigh in for us anyway. Uh, the, you know, what we tend to do is think about things on a global level. That's sort of think about, think about what kind of experiences uh, that we're having on a global level and that uh, people around the world are also sharing in. What kind of anxieties, what kind of excitements, those kinds of things. And it's, it's a layer of the storytelling. <clears throat> it helps us connect into like, how people are feeling and thinking collectively on a global level as opposed to more local, a more yeah. local level. We look for universal truths, and I think it is... Oh, uh, wow, it's like Rick goal, said right? that one. Wow. The primary goal <laughs> to use storytelling as a binding element to bring people together. That's why we have a global perspective. We're very fortunate to have worked all over the world right. uh, to talk to fan bases all over the world. So I think that uh, over time we've... Um, We've had a more sophisticated understanding of uh, of the way audiences think, and it uh, and you question, and care about it. 
uh, yeah. informs uh, our storytelling and the way that we construct stories. You know, Mr. Rajamali, I'd love you. I'd love for you to weigh in. Um, in, in your last two films, in, in Bahubali and in RRR, you actually told stories that were intrinsically Indian stories. They're rooted in mythology, they're rooted in Indian history, um, and yet these were films that spoke to a much larger audience than typically Indian cinema tends to reach out to. What do you attribute that to? Um, yeah. Uh, uh, me. I believe, me, uh, sir. A, story, a good story is a good story for all the people across the globe, whichever yes. country they yes. are in. But to take a story to cross the boundaries, to, for a story to cross boundaries, to cross cultures, there are many, many hurdles, but I think the principal hurdle is belief. Uh, principally, if if I don't believe that I have a sto good enough story that, that transcends uh, boundaries, then there is no way I can make uh, the other audiences believe that I have that story. So I think principally it is the uh, belief uh, uh, if we have that, the other hurdles can be crossed. So you don't tailor your stories to speak to a global audience specifically? No. Uh, uh, no. Uh, see, basically, like I was saying, an emotion is the same. Uh, a re human relation, a relationship between husband and wife, a father and son, two friends, whatever it is, it is the same as in America, as in India, as in Japan. You know, it is the same. It doesn't change. But how we tell that emotion changes, the nuances uh, will change. But the, the core emotion uh, remains the same. Uh, but the way, if, if I don't tell my story, the, the way I envision it, and I keep thinking about what others are going to envision, mm -hmm. then I think uh, I'm not doing, uh, doing a justice for both the people. Right. Well said. You know, um, what, what all three of you have in common is that you tend to dazzle us with the scale of your filmmaking. Clearly, you're not interested in small, intimate stories. Um, I want to ask all of you, how do you ensure that the, the drama, the emotion, the humor, if you like, doesn't get weighed down by the spectacle? You have to track it through character, and I think and, that's... And story. Raja does very well, yeah. especially in RRR. This is a very profoundly emotional character arcs story. and story yeah the spectacle is a backdrop and a vehicle by which that story is told but at the center of it is a profoundly emotional story of brotherhood mm -hmm. uh, um, and I think uh, you know that's an essential uh, as he said a moment ago that's essential mythology that can translate to to uh, any culture around the world the same is true for the work we do is we try to find that you know that um, essential uh, um, theme that's important to us, uh, um, put the characters on that theme uh, so that we have a spine, and then you build a spectacle around the goals of the characters. Great analogy. Uh, and if it's you're leading with spectacle, then you'll get lost. Mm. If you're leading with what the characters want, what their desires are, uh, what they're trying to accomplish, what they'll sacrifice their lives you for. You listen to yep. Game of Thrones? I think that is <laughs> You know, um, the spectacles. That we Sorry, Avengers is yeah. so good. Yeah, that emotional story rather than uh, the reverse. Mr. Rajamoli, do you do you agree with that? Yes, a lot. But uh, I have. Uh, uh, please don't put them and me on the same platform. <laughs> they have they have a they have had a mountain of success. I still have a small mound of success. So don't put us on the same platform. But, That's very um, sweet. I think yes, I I really uh, agree uh, with Joe on that aspect and. And for me, I mean, it's a dazzling spectacle. We love to do that. I love to do that. But the, the base of it, there needs to be an emotion that drives. The emotion is the basement on which we can build this huge spectacle. If that emotional engagement is not there, then how much ever big spectacle you give, the audiences will not be interested in. You know, mm -hmm. The other thing, of course, that you share in common is this love for action. Um, whether disguised as big superhero films or in the case of The Grey Man, a spy story, what you're doing is mounting these robust action films. It's, it's true of you, Mr. Rajamoli, as well. You're, you're clearly, action is clearly a genre you enjoy working in. Um, does action tend to travel wider than other genres? Yeah, it certainly does for me. Uh, I mean, it, there is a beautiful love story on one side and there is a, a medium kind of action film, both as an option, which I have to say, I first go for the action film. So it, it really, uh, I am uh, a huge action buff. So I tend to think the whole audience are like me. So uh, yes, that's a big bench for action film. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Action so, is a universal language, you know, and it's a um, it's about geography, choreography. Um, it can be told without words. Uh, so I do think in a lot of ways that um, it's the it's the most transcendent genre, the the one that the most universal genre, the one that most everyone in the world can follow and, and enjoys. Uh, we all understand uh, action and movement. I, and I think you've seen that over, you know, in the past decade or so, uh, there's been a large movement in terms of a global audience. Yeah. Uh, largely due to the internet and the c connection we all have now through through the internet and social media and the fact that we can communicate with one another absolutely uh, uh, about films together that's created more of a global audience and global sensibility and you, I think you've seen over the past decade action films have become more popular and sort of things like comedy sometimes things that are specific to like cultural right yeah exactly that's they, why we lose they, so yeah. much on the comedy side sort of at least in the Hollywood realm, they haven't sort of been as popular as they once were, and I, I think that speaks to the fact that that action is is a is a language that that connects the global audience in a strong way. You know, I think that generally when it comes to action, um, it tends to be about masculinity. Uh, they're they're usually about the male characters that get to have all the fun, so to speak. I know that um, I know that that's not. You, you have, of course, in, in the Avengers, for example, um, you've had some great female superheroes that have, that have kicked ass, so to speak. And, and, and um, it's, it's true of, of the Grey Man as well. You have Anna de Armas, who's excellent, um, you know, doing her stunts. And Mr. Rajamoli, I know that in, in, in Bahubali, at least, uh, you had Tamanna's character in the first film that uh, there was this rebel warrior, and she does get to do her fair share of action. But um, would you, would, would either of you be interested in, um, you know, would you be drawn ever, you think, to a, to a female-led action film? As long as the, Absolutely. As long yeah. as the story's uh, good. Think, um, Makes no uh, difference. You know, it's a, uh, yeah, let's take Anna's character, for instance. Um, strong, independent, uh, you know, not romantically linked yeah. to the lead character, has her own agenda and motivation, uh, and in fact, um, continually saves Ryan. Gosling. Tomb Raider was one of the first big action movie, things for, for a long uh, time in the 90s, right? Runner, Maya, but, uh, Mia Croft or what was her name? She is, uh, in a lot of ways, uh, uh, more competent uh, um, uh, uh, than he is. So was the uh, Wonder uh, Woman TV uh, series with Linda certainly. Carter. Uh, um, more, uh, more aggressive. I don't know how much action was in that one. Uh, sure <laughs> well, it was 1970s <laughs> action. <laughs> situation safely. Um, we love uh, Bionic Woman. Uh, strong, confident characters, irrespective of gender. Uh, um, but um, I think you know, uh, um, you know, the the world loves all stories, and uh, no matter what uh, story you tell, if you tell it well and you tell it truthfully. Um, um, they're going to support it, and uh, there's plenty of room for movies about um, strong female characters. Yeah. Well, I would also say that it's our job as storytellers to bring new experiences to audiences. You know, that, that's there's nothing better that we can do other than uh, bring a bring a version of a narrative to an audience that they haven't seen before. And certainly, uh, you know, there's a lot of room to to do innovative work with female characters because of the relative lack of, of uh, or the imbalance that's existed up to this point. Mr. Rajamoli? Uh, I, would, I would really allow to do, not just in terms of action, but uh, a really strong female lead uh, uh, leading the whole uh, story. Uh, there are a couple of uh, storylines that, that are running in my uh, mind. We are discussing that. Um, but like, like any film, at the end of, I don't think too many films at a time. At the end of one film, I just look at what are the exciting ideas that are around me. And I pick up the most exciting one at that point of time and go forward. If, if it's a hero film, it's a hero film. If it's a heroine film, it's a heroine film. You don't overthink it then. Um, no, no you, you can't. You can't go in thinking I've got to make a heroin film. He had a film that was hero was a fly. Yeah. <laughs> Have a. Of course, that sequence oh. in which uh, uh, Junior NTR's so good. Beam, uh, crashes that that celebration um, with that truck, and he releases. Uh, Epic. Uh, dozens of wild animals, including tigers, uh, that that wreak havoc. They're smiling. Like <laughs> 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 they're smiling. <laughs> How do you come up with something like that? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I like some crazy ideas, uh, definitely. And uh, uh, it, it also has a little bit uh, work on his character. He's a tribal 
then as we are working it we see what are yeah it's an extension of him being a yeah man uh, tribal man being living in the jungle he will have lots of yeah it's not it's not a uh, trick yeah. it's an extension of his that person kind of thinking uh, if he's going into a place which is not his strength. also so obviously he will gorgeous salt and pepper hair there uh, ss so rajman absolutely strengths? agree <laughs> Animals can be a not so much here. <laughs> so that kind of thinking will lead me to that. But apart from that, I, I really, really like to surprise and awe the people uh, to the maximum. Well, like evidently, you do it well. <laughs> you did it real well in our. So, so I think um, certainly where the gray man is concerned. And once the fly like, came in, an ego. That sequence of the city square in Prague, where. Which is again a great idea because you've got a target. You seen Gray Man yet? Hand, hand no, did you? Did you no, watch it? Not yet. And there's bullets and there's. Gosling wants to do an Indian film with the noosh now. That'd be awesome. And yeah, he does. I hear it's sequence. kind of. Um, I want to be your shrink for a moment. Like nothing so, new, but okay. it's fun. But it's fun. Can yeah. I link, you know, the kind of action that you do to to the eight year old in you that that. You know, just enjoyed blowing things up. <laughs> Probably, perhaps. <laughs> Although we were a bit more, um, we were a bit more academic when we were kids. Okay. We were sort of, you know, we weren't making movies. We weren't trying to make movies. We were more like just film geeks enjoying uh-huh. movies. Um, but certainly, we grew up with a bit of a, bit of a punk rock attitude toward toward the world, and I, I think that sort of tearing things up is sort of certainly appealing to us on some level. We're maximalists. I mean, we're entertainment <laughs> access. You know, we love scale, like ambition. You know, this was always meant to be a relentless action exercise. Yeah. So, um, you know, with, uh, you know, these sort of essential character elements um, pushing the film, but driven by action. Like the kind of movie that, um, you know, from frame one, it doesn't let you go till it's over. Endgame so, should have gotten a Best uh, that, Picture that nomination. Intent here, and um, I'm really interested in what's going to happen with the RRR was, with the Oscars. Me too. And just because it it's still going, people are still talking about is, it. Can, can I can I ask you the same question? Is the love for action linked to some sort of childhood fascination <laughs> for for blowing stuff up? I don't know. From from child as as. Young as I can remember, I, I loved action, uh, whether it's in the comic <laughs> books, cartoons, or, Who does? or Western films. Yeah, or but no, most. Whatever. Most action boys really, or uh, male leaning kinds of personalities, even in girls, really uh, do I love action. Ask, uh, uh, Fighting, Jordan blowing things up, sports. Uh, uh, it's just in the DNA. Uh, uh, I've always liked action. It's never been my favorite. Yeah, yeah me too. Pieces. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. But oh. they shot that. Within a space of five months, they started in in March and finished in July. That's, uh, I think, yeah. That's, Possibly. That's yeah, pretty I think much that's what I'm we're yes. done in July. Yeah. How can you do that? I mean, the trailer shows what kind of action that we are going yeah. to witness. In fact, one of the things that I hated with the interviews, I had to stop the film in between and come to this. <laughs> I just started. <laughs> in the trailer, that it, it was like so much of action, and how could you do it in five months? Like, are you directing two separate units? Great, uh, yeah, some, great, sometimes great, yeah, sometimes great, they bear. I was going to say, absolutely, they do more than two yeah, units. units. Our second unit, and then pickups can so be done by somebody who's just their first AD. Yeah. Days, and our second unit shot for yeah. 95 days. Yeah, second unit, 95 days unit filming. They're not even there. 40 days. So we do run multiple units because we have a, a time. Very big crew. That and you go into post immediately back now. Back it's not like now. put it in the can and then go into post. They film and go into post. You got to get them out. Mind meld That's why with each other. Black Panther we 2 has a trailer out, but they're still with, filming uh, because yep. they got to get the post. Uh, and it is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a military operation. Yeah. A, a, See, the Marvel a, slash Disney so people are under fire right now, though, because of what they do to their VFX people. Like, they the, overwork the them. They do that is not surprising. A crew that we need in order to pull this off in a way that it, it doesn't take a year and a half to shoot it. I, I think we also, you know, we've always spent a long time preparing you know, we, we spend many, many months preparing, as you may do. Um, but um, all because we were shooting this movie during the pandemic, and we knew that things were, go- once we got to production, things were going to be even more complicated than they normally are, and perhaps uh, be more challenging than they normally are, I think we prepared even more thoroughly uh, uh, so that, you know, we could overcome the complications. So that, that might have been also... A, 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 a help in terms of accomplishing it. Uh, great to know, but that must be one hell of a team that you have. <laughs> they are. <laughs> yeah.
You know, Mr. Rajamouli, um, while we're on the subject, you know, I, I think you'll agree with me that, um, you know, in Indian films often get, and I know that it's it's critics like myself who've done that as well, you know, um, you'll, you'll see a great action scene and you'll say, it's great by Indian standards. And and there's always a comparison Used to being be. made to, to the Not American anymore. or to, you know, one of the big American tentpole films. I want to ask you is, um, do you feel like, and I, and I do feel actually that RRR and Baubali have, have changed that narrative to some degree because they do really hold up um, on, on and very uh, high standards. But mm. I want to ask you, is is budget usually the only reason? It's um, a big reason. That, that the biggest. Some of our best action And time. Money and time. Look as big as they would, um, you know, as, as maybe the American films that we see? No, budget is, is definitely a reason, but it's not the first reason. Uh, uh, mm. it, it is... I mean, if you have the intent of uh, really going big, uh, uh, and 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 you have, like they were saying, if you have a great team to support, you know, those are the first principle uh, things. You should have the intent. You should have a team. You should have a vision, and then comes the budget. Uh, and most of the time, if you have the first three, the budget will somehow come in and uh, uh, support. Like the kind of action sequences that we did for Bar, where it was like. The first is like in 150 crores, which is like peanuts for the kind of budget of yeah. action that we did. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, so you've made these big box office blockbusters for the studios. Why was Netflix the right home for the Grey Man? Uh, well, look. Uh, money. <laughs> we got pay a lot. <laughs> to, to make it. We they made us an offer we couldn't to refuse. Construct a film mm. that was extremely ambitious on, a, on an action level, and that was b the experience uh, for the lead characters and for the audience would be that of just running a uh, running a gauntlet from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie. Um, so I think the scope of it, you know, Netflix was in a, gr a period is in a period of great grow growth, and they were uh, wanting to be very uh, ambitious in terms of what they could accomplish as a studio. And uh, they just uh, uh, wanted to support the film in, in the most strong way. Uh, and that's really why it felt right with Netflix. It just seemed to, the, the ambition of the movie seemed to line up with their appetite for what they wanted to do as a studio. Uh, I don't know and, when it was uh, greenlit, do you? They've been perfect mm -hmm. partners. My, my bet, it was back a couple years ago when they were going ex insane. Probably, uh, yeah. With Netflix when they were just, point, we want to do everything. Have a very strong, uh, easy, successful partnership with them established. So um, once we knew that they had the appetite for a movie like this, that's where it all clicked. Mr. Rajamoli, um, I think it's fair to say that after a very successful theatrical run, RRR was practically sort of rediscovered when it when it streamed on Netflix. Um, the American critics discovered it. It became this critics' darling. Um, a, a whole new audience sort of. Unfortunately, uh, on Netflix, about RRR. it's um, in Hindi. Some very serious talk of Oscar potential. Um, what? Were you surprised by the one on Netflix is in Hindi. How attention the film was getting after it began streaming? Yeah, uh, 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 there are uh, two questions in your question. Uh, one thing is yeah. like, uh, yep. first of all, I'm actually angry with Netflix because they took only the Hindi version. Not Thank the you! Uh, so that's yeah, the, you uh, should be angry. You can. suck for doing uh, that, Netflix. Is, yes, I was, as, as I was uh, good, surprised. Good job calling them out there. Uh, like heck, yes. With the reception yes. from the West. Uh, like, like we were discussing before, that's awful. A, story, a good story is Hold a good on. story for, uh, for everyone, but uh, I didn't think... Uh, I, I could make films for Western sensibilities. Uh, I, I never believed myself. Okay. So uh, when uh, it came out on Netflix and the uh, people started watching it, and the critics started uh, giving out a good uh, good reviews for that. Yes, I was really, really surprised. And, uh, I can't believe Netflix did yes, that. Yes, it wouldn't have been possible without Netflix for that. I have. It's on Z5, uh, but obviously that's not that's as not available. As, no. Have you seen um, anything off RRR? Have you seen? It's well, awful. Seen RRR. Oh, it's amazing. It's incredible. <laughs> I hope you I, saw it in the original uh, language. What's so amazing about it is the level of emotion that uh, it evokes uh, uh, combined with the spectacle. And I would say that, I, you know, we have found that one of the advantages of digital distribution, we seem to be in a position where we're always defending an agnostic approach to, um, uh, you know, filmmaking, uh, um, you know, because we're 
you know, we see value in all, all levels of distribution, whether it be th theatrical or digital. But digital has, uh, um, uh, and, you know, endorsed and allowed for more diversity uh, um, than... What in the hell's diversity? Have. And I would say in five Anchorman. years, it's probably done more for diversity uh, and access to diverse uh, and international films than, than Hollywood has done in 50 years. Uh, I think that's critically important. Um, and I think that um, it's broken down barriers for, um, uh, again, for people to, uh, uh, on a popular level, uh, so, uh, to I'm watch still. films. <laughs> uh, it's really and, insulting. Um, it's been a long time, yeah. I think, since, I, I, well, I can't remember when theatrically. It was um, it was a popular concept they, to watch all the subtitles. They, they can so, still change it. Uh, I think there's a real value. In well, that. I think you know, when you're talking about our our, our finding a, a, a you know, I'm pretty sure Z has the rights to the Telugu, but I'm betting he's saying Netflix only wanted the Hindi version. Uh, is my bet. Uh, um, a show uh, like uh, Squid Games would never have worked. Um, in any other format than through digital distribution. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Uh, yeah. And it became an international phenomenon. Yeah. So I think audiences are getting a window now into true Indian cinema, true Korean. Uh, uh, Not us. I've never watched making. an Indian film. Uh, and what about you? Very valuable. Maybe one. <laughs> going to inform and inspire yeah. a new generation of filmmakers all over the world. Uh, and where you know they're going. Dude, to there's great stuff coming from all over the world. From yep. all of their there is movies from every region, and uh, and their favorite stories and yes. them in a way that I think will be very unique and uh, and uh, and very fresh. Has the idea of what a film is has that been redefined? Because all of you really make these big, epic cinematic experiences, which I think most people would agree um, need to be seen in a on a on a big screen on a, in a movie theater and yet um, all movies should be seen in a movie theater roughly 200 countries um rrr was was sort of had a new lease of life when it dropped in netflix um the idea of what a film is is that is that in this sort of climate perhaps in this in this world now been redefined then i think it's evolving yeah i mean i would argue that it's evolving dramatically and i think um um you know the uh, you know the way that i won't speak for raja but uh, I will say that I know that the way that we think that the two-hour closed narrative <laughs> is a well-tread narrative. What? It's a form that is very difficult to... That is not the Indian form. <laughs> um, um, you know, re reinvention. What's it's the gray man runtime, do you know? Probably right under two hours, I bet. Under two? Hour okay. Narrative. Yeah, because their their Avenger play. films don't hit the two-hour narrative. We're interested in long-form stories. Exactly. It can be more surprising. Um, also, you know, um, um, it's just really a, a, a amount of time that the audience spends watching something. So you kill a character after they spent an hour watching a movie, it has a certain impact on them. They watch eight hours of a story, and then you kill the character, it has an even more dramatic impact on them. So there is a, um, um, there's more potential in our mind for revolutionary storytelling in long form, which is why we encourage it and push it, which is what we all call universe building. But for us, all that means is a longer narrative than just a two-hour closed story. Um, um, and, uh, and, and that's Welcome to Indian where, cinema. <laughs> um, we're most compelled. So is Gray Man going to have a sequel? I'm sorry, Raj, I didn't mean to jump in but i'd love to hear your point of view on this absolutely i uh, absolutely agree with you uh, just add to that see every every storyteller uh, when he narrates a story he wants his story to be heard by a larger number of audience and and he will he will be very greedy in that aspect he needs more and more audiences to listen to his, uh, to his story and there is no way we, uh, we can have that kind of reach without uh, uh, digital distribution, uh, Netflix being at the forefront of it, uh, without having uh, those kind of partners. We can't even imagine. I mean, the kind of reception RRR getting, is getting now, we can't even imagine without uh, Netflix taking it to so many countries, so many varied cultures, so many people talk, uh, speaking different languages. But only in Hindi. Uh, being said that, uh, again, my my first club is, is always cinema. That is where I discovered my love for uh, uh, storytelling. 
and there is a kind of scare in my uh, fear in my heart that uh, digital distribution might might completely eat away the cinema. That's the scare. I know it is not true. They, they, eventually, they will settle down. There will be a, a cinemas will be a, a kind of film viewing experience. Uh, digital distribution will be a different kind. Television will be a different kind of uh, viewing experience. I think three of them will coexist. But the scare and fear yeah, yeah, is there. Uh, what are you reading? Say, I think to your about point the Hindi about version of net uh, of RRR. Down at, at one point. Uh, I think India is a, a great, great proof that the theatrical experience will always be a unique, a wholly unique version of, of film going. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yep. From yep. Film Absolutely. The energy that you get within the movie theater. Nothing like it. Is just like nothing else that you can experience on your own or in a, in a smaller home environment. Uh, and that's something that we sort of love as well that sort of that collective experience when you're sitting in a theater together you're feeling one another's energy and you can just you go on the ride with a whole theater full of people that's just a, that's another experience altogether you know mr rajamoli i i have to ask you um the the abiding love for for the big screen movie and 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 you know the big screen entertainment aside um has just the the experience that you've had with RRR since it dropped on Netflix, has that sort of, is that tempting you in any way to perhaps do something straight for streaming? <laughs> I, I mean, uh, I have uh, some of the ideas which I have been contemplating to take for streaming, uh, irrespective of the success of RRR. I mean, for a, a long time, uh, for example, uh, the Bodhian segment, which uh, Mandaratnam Sir is doing now, uh, for a long time I had that in my mind to make it for streaming because that is the perfect way to tell that particular story. You can't tell that story uh, uh, easily in a in a film, but if you have a uh, like if you have a web series kind of thing, where which is like now you can tell the story in eight hours or ten hours or fifteen hours or twenty hours. Uh, there are many stories that we have which which uh, a web series is a is a right platform like like uh, uh, Joe was explaining a, a bit earlier. Uh, yeah, I have a few of the uh, thoughts like that, and that has got nothing to do with the success of RRR. I always had that thought. You know, um, taking off from, from what Mr. Rajamali said, I have to ask all of you, um, can you talk about what cinema meant to you growing up? Um, was it a big influence, and what, are the, what were the films that changed your lives? Big, big, big influence uh, uh, films. Uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, for me, I, uh, as a very young boy, Telugu films that I have watched, uh, particularly from uh, Vijaya Production House, uh, uh, Maya Bazaar, uh, Mr. Ma, those are the classics of Telugu cinema. Uh, they had a huge impact on me. A little later, uh, uh, films like Ben Har, uh, I mean, even today, I have said that so many times. I think I told you itself so many times that uh, I have watched it like hundreds of times. I mean, just the Chariot Race, I would have watched. <laughs> Chariot Race, I would have watched a thousand times. Uh, uh, and Brave Heart. Uh, mm. Mel Gibson is my favorite, favorite uh, uh, director. I, I get inspired so much from his Me real too. storytelling. All his films had a big, a brilliant uh, director uh, impact on me. Hates Jews. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can go on and on about the number of films that uh, that had. Uh, hey, these are his on. words, not mine. Even, even, even today, even today. There's audio. Yeah, I mean, we films were very important to us when we were young, but so were music was very important. Um, we were sort of into the arts in general. You no, know, I've never seen Ben Hur. The pop culture, really? Also yeah, yeah you good. should. Because my wife loves uh, Ben Hur. Uh, I, I should. Great movie. I should watch uh, Ben Hur. Movies were central. And we we loved that. Not the new one. We had a big no. appetite. We we would watch uh, sort of popcorn. Kirk Douglas. I mean, filmmaking. Charlton Heston. You know, that was that that all all your friends and family were watching, and you can enjoy that together. But we were also into more obscure movies as well. Come back, Joe. We grew up near. A <laughs> it's probably been a long <laughs> junket. It has. Global cinema. Long we got press to tour. To a lot of films that uh, weren't sort of playing for the mainstream or. Or playing widely, so um, yeah, we had a yeah we. Um, I mean, look at at the end of the day, while we would geek out on a lot of obscure stuff, where like we were very much into the French New Wave and Francois Truffaut, and and um, but at the end of the day, it was those movies that everybody else was watching, 
it seemed to be the most fun and energizing because you could connect to other people through the movies. Yeah. And so the bigger sort of Star Wars and Indiana Jones and the bigger sort of com uh, Hollywood commercial adventure films were, were uh, big touchstones for us as well. You know, I have to ask the film geek question. What do you like when you're on the set? Are you patient? Are you anxious? Um, are you Depends on the day. Raring to go. What, what, what is the temperament like when you're on set? Do you yell at um, people like Christian Bale? Press, um, <laughs> diligently because we're a duo. So we have to collaborate. We have to talk through our process uh, exhaustively before we get to set. But we have a crew, too, that we've worked with for many years that is part of that process now as well. Uh, so our development process is, is very disciplined. I don't even know how that. I mean, obviously so they grew up together, so they know how each other work. But that just seems crazy to me. Me too. Who gets the final say? Away from their families. So what if you both have strong opinions about? Time. Is it a give and take? And, um, uh, but we like to keep it very light. There's lots of jokes. Uh, and um, you know, I've heard Quentin uh, runs a level of wonderful set. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I've heard that people, a lot of feet, um, so, uh, a lot of feet, uh, but I, I've heard people so love that his, his set ambiance is going, really fun. Uh, mm. And, uh, you know, geared towards problem solving. Mr. Rajamali, what do you like? Uh, I so wish I could be like them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm very, very patient with the actors because I can't uh, upset them. And because ultimately the audiences are going to see their faces their faces have to be the way they should be so i i can't get upset with them i feel very very patient with them uh but i blow my top, top off with the rest of them. <laughs> it is frustrating <laughs> <laughs> i want to end by asking um all three of you what is the last thing that you saw that made you go wow i wish i'd made that R -R -R. I just finished Str Stranger Things season four, <laughs> and I thought that the scale, and again, this is, I don't want to get into a long conversation about long form storytelling versus two hour closed, but the scale of it mm. was as big as anything I've seen. Uh, it had an ensemble that I cared about, all the characters, and, uh, and a villain that was um, frightening. Right. Uh, and I thought, uh, th you know, that the Duffer brothers had really ascended to um, the ranks of, you know, biggest filmmakers in the world uh, with that season. Uh, and uh, I'm just more compelled by, um, you know, that sort of robust storytelling. I also quite liked The Boys season three uh, for the same reason. You've seen any of that? Scale, I've seen ensemble. the first three episodes. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, I just haven't had time to. I have wanted to um, see that. It was The first three episodes was fucking more, hilarious. Yeah. I'm more yeah. compelled by... Uh, um, longer form pieces. Fact, I'm reminding so, myself. In general, I think I just yeah, I just more to I don't have time right now. <laughs> I do to movies now. You know, th this isn't the latest thing, but it, it just popped into my head when you asked the question because mm -hmm. it was such a resonant thing for me. I remember when we saw the uh, the original Iron Man movie, the first Iron Man movie, mm. for the first time, and. You know, I think we can forget about this a lot because there there ended up being so many sort of good films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but that original Iron Man movie yeah, was so, mind-blowing. So yep. great. The way they combined spectacle and character and the way they sort of <clears throat> inverted the approach to the superhero in that movie, it was just never seen anything like that before, and it seemed so tonally modern. Uh, that I remember having that feeling of, of wow, they, they got that. I wish we could have done that. For you, Mr. Rajamali? Uh, not in the recent past, like like Anthony was saying. Uh, uh, one of the films was Bajrangi Bajan. I saw. Mm. And I saw. Wish I could. I could. Uh, I could have that actually if I had applied a little bit mind. I, That's I the salmon one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but, with Nawaz. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I regret that. And and not a film, but. Uh, I used to play a, a game called Prince of Persia. I was really addicted uh, to that game 15 years back, something, something, 12, 15 years back. Uh, I really, really thought it would be very nice to make that character, write a story about that character and make it to a movie. Uh, I really thought that later Disney made it. Uh, yeah, those two I wish I, I could have made. Who knows, a reboot maybe on the cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Rajmoli. Thank you to Joe and Anthony. This was this was really every film geek's um, dream. Thank you so much. This was Thank so enjoyable. Thank you very much. Amazing questions. And Raja, such a pleasure. Huge yeah. fan. Thank, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So, yeah. so nice to meet you. But we should catch up. We should uh, really yes. catch up. I would really like to meet. We look forward to that. Thank you. And yeah, thank you for putting us together in this and, and for all your. Yeah, questions. great idea. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> great, great idea to have them all together. Endings like that. are awkward. <laughs> yeah. So I, I looked. I'm talking about the Hindi Netflix thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, the, when Z and Disney Hotstar got, they got all versions. They got it was made available. So Netflix got all the versions as well. They had the available available to them. They had the original Telugu. Dubbed Tamil, Malayalam, Canada, and Hindi, and and Netflix just took Hindi, and I'm pretty sure I know why. It doesn't say it in here, but I'm pretty sure I know why. Why? Because they didn't want to split the, the numbers. Views. It's the most watched Indian film of all time. They wanted one, so they could say that. Because Netflix needs their numbers to be up because their stock has been dropping and they want their investors to be happy. It was 100% only a decision. And this pisses me off because this isn't the first time you've ever heard of a director being mad at a distributor for doing things they don't want them to do. You should never, ever go against the wishes of the creator of the film just because you want to make money off the film. You wouldn't have the money if it wasn't for their film. And this should have been done... If they wanted a Hindi version, they, that's fine. But the primary version is Telugu in that language. And it's offensive to the Telugu people. It's offensive to him and his creation. And they did it because they cared more about money than they did art. And yeah. I get it in the boardroom. They're looking at those numbers. But if you're really going to be about artistry, don't say it. Do it with your fucking pocketbook. Yeah. And the fact that you had access to all of them, you could have just been like combined it do had... them all and say the combined views are the most but they couldn't so there was an easier bullet point headline the most watched indian film of obviously all time. i i we reviewed rr with uh, my, my film club and they all loved it it's one of their favorite How films ever and they're recommending it to everybody they know it's it's one of those things uh that everybody's just so passionate about how good this film is but the people that couldn't see it, I sent them, because we I have a Z5 account, and anytime we have to watch a movie on Z5, I, I sent them our login info, because I was like, I, I need you to watch it in its original language if you can't make it to the theater, please. And so I would send them that version. And somebody was like, how different is the one on Netflix? I don't know. It's, it's, it's dubbed. It's dubbed. And so it's going to, I mean, the stuff, Nacho Nacho is Nacho Nacho. I, so you're not even going to hear the same songs, really. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you're you're not even going to be getting like like any dubbed thing. You're not going to be getting the nuances of things that are happening in the moment that are captured with live filming on the spot. And what's maddening about that is the majority of people that Netflix is going to get to watch that who speak Hindi. Also, the majority of those people that speak Hindi also happen to speak English. Yeah. So if they had simply put English subtitles on the Telugu version, we wouldn't have had an issue. It still would have been, because the movie is great, it would have been the biggest watched movie, but they didn't want to gamble with that. They and thought, well, they, we, they probably if, know their audience as well. well that, like they know which what language. Think? I promise you their most... Hindi their Hindi movies get watched more than their Telugu ones. Yeah. So what? Yeah. Make a change. Maybe this would have been the first time you actually give the Telugu audience a, a bigger platform and start to raise them up yeah. rather than just cater what to what you know works. Yeah. Was, yeah. Really well, disappointing. I I mean I've known that they did it since it went to streaming, which is so maddening. Um, but the fact that they had access to all of them, <laughs> I would love to actually talk to SS Rajamouli. Uh, if anybody knows how to yeah, uh, get in contact, I would love to be able to talk 100%. to hundred percent. I think if, and the Russo brothers, if they'd be willing to come <laughs> talk to us, <laughs> if, um, if I feel like if like ego was made today, that problem that we have with the first 30 minutes would be, it, w it wouldn't be as, as jarring because of when that movie was made. Yeah. The style that the acting was and, and all that kind of, cause uh, we even said it. 
It was. I did not like the movie the first thirty minutes. Yeah, no. Once it the starts fly, when the fly shows. Once up. the fly came in, it's, it became one of the most of entertaining films Absolutely. we've ever seen. So, yep. SS Roger Moly knows how to make an entertaining film. He even, sure does. Even though obviously we had issues with the Bahubalis, um, that it it, it the millions of people is one of the most watched ever of uh, Indian films. So it's clearly we're just the odd people out there. Well, and the the other thing he does that I want to applaud and I hope other filmmakers in India replicate is you heard him talking about one of the things that they contemplate for their film. The Russo brothers talked about character and story, which is the heartbeat for us of anything. Not surprisingly, he pointed out emotion, mm -hmm. but he doesn't cater to mm -hmm. emotion. No, He gets you connected emotionally through his story and his characters. But he doesn't do what we often point out and go, please stop with the over-the-top, cliche, ridiculous stuff where you're just trying to get our emotions and that's your primary goal. He's yeah. really good at getting you connected emotionally without placating to emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Really good interview. Really enjoyed yeah. it. Enjoyed it. Uh, so please let us know um, what you thought about the interview, what other interviews we can react to. If you know SS Roger Mulley or if SS Roger Mulley you're watching, please come on the channel. Love to talk to you, man. Yeah. And what should be the next uh, SS Roger Mulley film that we should watch? Please let us know down below. Josh!